So once I had this entire area recessed, smooth and flat, I then needed to create this relief and this relief here so I could have uh, two fillets, like I've shown here, one on top, one on bottom. And to do that, I used a sash filister. And a sash filister is typically used in window making. Uh, and the way this works is you have an end, you have a nicker here, you have a depth stop, and you have a filister that you can move back and forth. And uh, that's, you can adjust the fence. Um, so the depth stop was set at the relief that I wanted this bead down and uh, the edge nicker was set ever so slightly to cut the wood on the edge here for the higher section, the higher relief, and that would keep the wood from tearing out. So now, as I said before, with a sash filister, you start first by pulling the plane backwards to make sure you're, you're engaging the marking line you've got before. And that way the plane blade isn't cutting, but the nicker is just riding right along. And you'll see if it creates a double line that you're off, but this one isn't, so it's right on. And with most other planes, uh, you'll want to start at the end and start planing down. You know, start planing down at the end and then work your way back. And it's just a fine little shave, and I have this set extremely fine because I don't want this breaking out at all. This is the kind of shaving I'm looking for, these fine little windings. Let's see, am I going to pass by that now? No problem. Getting very close to full depth now. Oh, I think that might have been it. I don't think it grabbed it all that time. That's it, okay. So I've got that. Now I just need to use the hollow planes to round it over and make the molding. So let me try and zoom in here so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got one level down here. I've got the second level up here. I'm gonna take the hollow planes and round this, this right now is a square corner and around the square corner over using the hollow planes. So I get a nice two-step bead going up down the side. I'll do the same thing on this side as well. Meanwhile, most of the way through the other side. Now you probably noticed I went both directions. Uh, with the grain and against the grain, and no tear out whatsoever. Um, part of the reason is because I set the blade extremely shallow in here, so my cuts were very, very fine, as you can see. Uh, but the other reason, and you may have picked this up if you've used planes before, these aren't um, these aren't just regular spirals. These are kind of twisted spirals, you know, kind of like confetti. And the reason that they turn out like this instead of like a tight coil is because this blade is skewed. You see it's skewed in the plane there. And what that allows you to do, since it's skewed, you're not really going directly into the grain or with the grain. You know, you're, you're kind of going slightly at an angle to it. And so it allows you to slightly cross cut grain as you plane into it. And so you end up being able to cut through it even if it would normally tear out uh, if you're using just a regular straight across blade. This is a, a fairly shallow skew. Some skewed planes are set a little bit more but I've never had problems with this one. Uh, and as you can see, this wood has been pretty tricky in some areas I was showing you earlier, but this fine little thing here, this fine little little ledge, uh, no problems whatsoever, no tear out at all. So if you if you do end up getting a sash filister plane, I, I highly recommend you find a skewed one. I'm not sure if they're all skewed. It's extremely handy to be able to go with and against the grain. And to do that, you definitely should have a skew plane. Uh, the next step was to round them, round these squared sections off, round them over. And so I use these. I have two hollow planes. Um, this one's a number two, that's a number six. And uh, they are a portion of a circle. Uh, this one's a little easier to see. 
there you can see it's a portion of a circle there and so what you can do is create different degrees of that circle by rotating the plane along the spring angle the spring angle being the angle that you work the plane on the plane is meant to be worked on um, so you just rotate this around and so you can create a 90 degree arc and once you've done that um, you may have some areas that look a little rough you take some uh, and you, you then take your paring chisel Got this is my finest one, uh, my narrowest and thinnest, I should say. Not finest as in best, but just finest. And there's another one, slightly larger. And I use those to clean up any areas of the molding uh, where I may have dragged uh, dragged a corner a little bit, or I was a little bit too high on an edge, uh, or something still got a little bit of a facet showing. Just clean it right up with that. And then the way to get this looking shiny uh, is to take shavings that you've that you've had from removing all this wood and you just rub them into the wood here and it burnishes it and makes it shiny and hard and, and it cleans up and smooths out any rough spots that you may have had from imperfections while you were planing it. And it ends up looking you know, pretty nice for just a, for just a rough little uh, demonstration. Alright, I brought the camera down to this angle so you can better see the profile that I've created. You can see I've got two steps on either side. And now the next step is going to be taking this hollow plane and rotating it as I rotating it uh, after each pass and what that'll allow me to do is create a nice fillet right across through here and I've got my number two that I'm going to use for this bottom piece here round that over and then I've got a number six that I'm going to use to round the top over and you do just take many passes I typically start at about a 45 just to get the end in uh, you can use a, a chamfer plane first to this to take to knock this off so you don't wear out the blade on your on your hollow plane. But because I'm not doing a ton here, it's only going to be a few passes. I'm not too worried about it. But if you were to do a lot of this sort of work or you use your hollow planes a lot, uh, you want to preserve the sharpness on those blades since they are harder to sharpen than straight blade planes. So it is advised that you would knock this corner down uh, using either a chamfer plane that has a straight blade or with uh, number four that you're really careful with. Um, something like that. So as with all wood bodied planes um, that are, have a wedge set blade, uh, I like to start with the blade slightly retracted from where I think it needs to be and then work my way into the correct depth. So I'm going to start here and it looks like it needs to be pushed out just a little bit. first couple passes you're not going to get too much. You'll see these are more twisted spirals. It's because these, these hollow planes are skewed. But with each pass you're going to grab more and more. So there's no, really no need to rush into it. You can see the shavings are already, get, already getting substantially larger. With these planes, particularly this style wooden plane, the, the mouth is extremely small. It's very tight, so you can take these very fine shavings. If you were to set the blade too aggressively, the shavings get too thick and they just clog in there and you waste a lot of time constantly clearing them out. So if, it, if uh, you do have it, even if you do have it set this finely, I recommend that you make sure to clear the area of shavings every now and then so you don't get a couple layers of shavings stuck in there. Starting to round over. got this I'm going to take the take uh, my larger plane and round over the next one and then you keep these shavings on the side because they're really good to help you burnish the surface and get, give you a nice smooth surface but let me take the camera down and give you an idea of what we're talking about here 
So that was with maybe, and I wasn't really counting, but probably about a dozen passes. And you can see that little tiny bead there now. Bring it over to the side. See, not bad. It was pretty easy uh, using a plane like that. So I took that edge, pretty squared off, and made it a nice round edge. And as with all planes, your starting edge is generally a little rough. Uh, but what I can do is use a paring chisel to round that over exactly what I'm looking for. But you can see, once the plane was fully engaged, you get a nice round, nice round little thing there. Nice bead all the way down. Only a couple minutes work. Now the idea will be to recreate that on the opposing side. And again, because it's a skew plane, it's not a problem going both directions. You can see this one is only very slightly skewed, so I'm a little worried about it. It's almost nearly head on. So I may have to flip this one over, but that's the benefit of starting off with really fine shavings high up on the, on the corner is if you get a little tear out, you'll have time to recover. Um, and uh, once you figure out which way the grain is going. So this one's slightly head on, not ideal. I would prefer to have a skew, a skew hollow set, but I don't have all skews yet. So working on it. a situation where the grain changes direction right at the end here and I'm getting a little bit of tear out. So I'm already having problems with the straight on blade but let's see if just turning it the other direction helps me out for that sort that spot. It does. So that's what I'll do. I'll go down near the end and then clean up with this going the other direction and then if I still have any trouble Clean up with the paring chisel. I may also want to set this a little finer. That may help too. See how that does. Now I've got two beads, top and bottom. Pretty happy with the way that turned out. Now let's bring the camera down here so you can get a better look. And that's what we're looking at. A little bead on top, a little bead on bottom. Now the last step to get out all those imperfections from planing, smooth everything out. You just take your shavings and you just rub them pretty hard into the wood. And you'll start to see the wood get a little bit of shine on it in the molding, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a nice little sheen. Make sure to get it into the little, all the little wedges and the nooks. And this will also help you see any areas you may want to clean up with a paring chisel. But sometimes a little imperfection is not a bad thing because it shows that it was made by hand and not a machine.
And also burnishing makes the wood nice and hard. So it'll preserve your molding a little better against nicks and splintering. For some reason the molding is always where everyone ends up smacking in things, right? go. It's all nice and shiny now. And it's burnished. You can see how much shinier it is than the wood around it. And that's how you know your molding is good to go. Thanks for watching. In the next part I'm going to go over laying out and cutting dovetails both half blind and full blind. So stick around.